welcome back to emotions and potions a love slash hate letter to with ashton and alex welcome back we're so happy you're here and i think that we're really excited to talk about our next romance book so this is a twofer this episode oh it, it you're right it is a twofer so we're going to be talking about priest and midnight mass by sierra simone and so Priest is the full-length novel, and Midnight Mass is the novella that follows mm -hmm. Priest. All right. So Alex, tell us r what this book is about. What is the synopsis? All right. So the back of the book synopsis for Priest. A priest cannot marry. A priest cannot abandon his flock. A priest cannot forsake his God. I've always been good at following rules until she came. Then I learned new rules. My name is Tyler Anselm Bell. I'm 29 years old. Six months ago, I broke my vow of celibacy on the altar of my own church. And God help me, I would do it again. I am a priest, and this is my confession. So as synopsis go, that one's not terrible. I think it, it gives a decent idea of what we're dealing with. It's going to be a little taboo. We're dealing with a priest who broke, <laughs> broke a vow, yeah. a big one. A few big ones. A few big ones. And, you know, I like a synopsis that doesn't give everything away. There's a lot of things still unanswered with this synopsis, but I think it gives away the most kind of polarizing piece of this book and its novella. So, in this book, you're going to find some trigger slash content warnings. Okay, time for the trigger warnings. And there are a lot. Quite a few. So, some include mentions of systematic sex abuse, death by suicide, graphic sex, masturbation, unprotected sex, BDSM, strip clubs, and blasphemy. Yep. We are dealing with a person of religion who has a lot of rules that they have to follow. And they're in holy places a lot of the time. So there are some very uncomfortable <laughs> holes in holy places. Holes in holy places. That sums us up perfectly. <laughs> That should be on the cover of the book. Oh Holes my god. In holy places. So you've been warned what this episode is about to kind of be laying out. Join us for the ride of Father Bell. Father Bell. Oh dear. So okay. Priest and Midnight Mass. It is definitely a dark taboo romance. Would you say dark? Or more taboo? I would say more taboo. I wouldn't say, I think it might, people might put it in like a dark romance just because of the taboo of the book. I personally wouldn't. I would say more of like a, a taboo romance because outside of the things that are taboo, the content isn't really dark. So I would say that this is more of a definitely taboo with some darker themes, but nothing where I was like, oh, this is like too much. Too much. Yeah. So Priest is a taboo with dark themes romance. It's going to be a first person POV romance novel from the guy's perspective. This is mostly going to be from Father Tyler Bell's perspective. Our female love interest is Poppy. All right. So for priest. And to priest, let me introduce you to today's cocktail. Yes, what is it? This is Poppy's Kiss. Poppy's Kiss. And what is in Poppy's Kiss? First, let's talk about with Poppy's Kiss, the magic that happened while making the drink. Oh, yes. Yes. This is color changing. A scene that I really enjoyed in the book uh, deals with stained glass, like the stained glass um, reflecting off of Poppy. So that was uh, inspiration for this. So I wanted it to be color changing and I wanted it to end in a reddish color because Poppy's signature lip color is red and Tyler's super obsessed with her red lips. So Poppy's kiss and to make her uh, start out with some Empress Gin and then you add lemon juice to get your first color change. And after that, um, I made a blackberry simple syrup, which then gave us another color change added a bit of um, syrup from some maraschino cherries for another little color change. It was a very subtle one, but it's still there. Ideally, you would shake all of that 
Um, but we did record a video of me making this drink so you can see the color changing and the magic that happened. So I needed glass so <laughs> to get that. So make sure you like either stir it or shake it all together, then pour it into your glass of choice. Again, I used a frosted coupe glass and topped it off with some blackberry sparkling water. Let's try this bad boy. Oh yeah. That is very, it's, um, it's very refreshing. It's very light. It's almost like tardy. Mm -hmm. Is that a word? Tardy? Yeah. The, black, <laughs> the blackberry is definitely going to give it more of like a, a sweet tart kind of taste to it. It's a little sweet, little tart. Um, definitely not as sweet as drinks that I normally drink, but. And definitely not as sweet as the birthday girl. Right. Episode. But this is very good. This is delish. Thank you. I'm glad you liked it. I was kind of worried. Why? Knowing your alcohol. Um. Preference. <laughs> I know you like your drinks on the sweeter side. So. You're not wrong. No, but this is really good. I'm, you know what? It's more so when it comes to alcohol. As long as I can't taste the alcohol, I don't give a fuck. Normally I go sweet because sweet things cover up alcohol because normally there's a lot more shit in them <laughs> but as long as i can't taste the alcohol like i'm good and like this could honestly just be like a non-alcoholic drink i i'm not tasting like the gin which i like i watched you make it so i know there's gin in it but yeah there's a healthy amount of gin <laughs> yes 10 on 10 that's fantastic alex you did it again Yay. poppy's kiss so ashton yes Give us a little bit of a plot breakdown. Okay, so the book starts out, obviously this is in Tyler's point of view. So it's- as, Prologue very much states this is his confession. Yes. So like this whole story is kind of his confession of the events that follow. Of his love story. Of his love story. And he is a priest in this small town in Missouri. Poppy comes in. Um, we start out, it's a confession day. So uh, Father Bell's in the church listening to confessions. He normally only has one person. Poppy comes in because she's kind of seeking that spiritual guidance. She's lost and looking for some direction. And she decides she wants to give religion. A try. So Tyler is kind of uh, like in a, in a church, in a Catholic church, confession is normally you don't see the priest and the priest doesn't see the confessor. And so this is very, this is on brand with this scene yes. kind of starting out where Tyler is instantly kind of intrigued by Poppy from like her voice because yeah. he obviously doesn't see her. She doesn't see him, but there's something about. He's intrigued. Yeah. There's something about Poppy. He wants to know more. Yes. And he can also from her confession sense that she's lost and he wants to give her guidance. Yes. And it does start off, he does want to genuinely give her spiritual guidance. But the more she talks, the darker his internal thoughts start to go. They start to they start to wander in a way that a priest's thoughts shouldn't wander about a female. Poppy, um, in her first confession, kind of is talking about her profession, her old profession, um, which Tyler is kind of thinking that she might be like an exotic dancer or something of that kind of nature, a stripper, whatever. So um, Tyler ends up going home to see his family in Kansas City, where he has um, brothers who are very successful businessmen. And one of the brothers, Sean, is part of this very exclusive club in Kansas City. And Tyler has known about this club because Sean's mentioned it, I think, a few times. But I think in this trip, he kind of starts to think that Poppy potentially works He's realizing here. from Poppy's confession and this conversation with Sean, this is the one in the same club. So after Tyler's um, visit at home, he makes his way back to St. Margaret's, which is the Catholic church he works and lives at. And Poppy comes back for an appointment and this is kind of where we also get some more background story into Poppy. So Poppy is from the East Coast, comes from a very wealthy family, went to Dartmouth, has her MBA, has multiple degrees. In business, you know, she's always followed the family plan for her life, though that plan completely 
is completely opposite of what she wants and who she truly is. She goes to New York. She tries her hand at doing the business thing, but she realizes she's only getting jobs because of her last name. And when she realizes that, she's she really wants to be done with this kind of like high society. And that's when she gets in the car. Drives till she cannot drive anymore. And that's how she wound up in Missouri. Yes. And we also learn information on uh, Tyler's oldest sibling, Lizzie, his oldest sister, who died, who has who has been dead for about 12 years at this point. We learn that she committed suicide, but we don't at this point learn exactly why yet. Until this interaction when they're exchanging how they're coming to faith. So Tyler reveals his calling to uh, becoming a Catholic priest is his sister's death. Um, she was being sexually abused by their priest. For years. For years. And when she was 19, she couldn't take it anymore. Um, she buried what was going on. Nobody knew. She died by suicide. And in her suicide note, she named her abuser and also gave a list of other victims. And I think that Tyler took this so serious, so intensely and so personally because he was the one who found her. He kind of felt that guilt that he didn't know that she was hurting, that he felt responsible in some way, that he couldn't see the signs that she was suffering because this was something that she took to her grave. Yes, and her death and the accusation and... Thankfully, in this case, prosecution and arrest and jail time of said priest <laughs> of said priest not only rocked Tyler and his family, but the whole town that they grew up in and the church. And it shook Tyler's faith for a while, but then he decided to honor his sister's memory. He did want to become a priest to better the Catholic Church and bring about change within the church. Yes. So that's his whole mission is to restore faith in the church, in priesthood, and in the community. Yes. And so after these kind of dark, like deeper conversations, um, the next interaction we have between Tyler and Poppy is um, Poppy coming back for her confession. And this confession um, is actually in Poppy's point of view. So this is one of the rare instances where we actually do get the insight of Poppy in throughout this book. And so essentially it's her kind of confessing that she is struggling. Sexual being. Yes. So her ex-boyfriend Sterling, we learn, they dated for multiple years kind of when she was growing up through early adulthood. And he cheated on her. And he was part of that same upper echelon crowd of the New Englanders who come from old money. And it was always kind of destined that like Poppy and him were supposed to get married because they both come from these very old wealthy families. And they were going to, you know, go on and create the preppy children and have the whole yeah. 1% life together. However, Poppy... Being, um, being more in touch with her sexuality and sexual nature, not really caring about the whole upper crust lifestyle. Uh, Sterling never thought she was really going to make the good New England rich wife. Yeah. And Sterling is a interesting character, uh, to say the least. He definitely sucks. <laughs> He's not a great guy, especially to Poppy. I wish he was worse, though. In this confession, uh, Poppy is getting into very graphic detail where she is admitting that she has stripped before, that that was the profession that she kind of found herself in after she fled her New York life um, because she was a dancer in her in her youth and in her teenage years, she actually wanted to pursue dancing. That's what she wanted to do. Yeah, she wanted to get a dance degree. Versus, From Juilliard. Yeah, versus going to Dartmouth and getting her business MBA. 
Yes. Her and Sterling, before she fled, were in a relationship for multiple years where he was not faithful. She did not know this at the time. She found out that their relationship was over due to an engagement announcement for Sterling and Penelope. Someone else. Some other girl. This is how she, this is how the relationship ended. Sterling did not want Poppy to be his wife because of her sex appeal. He didn't want people like his business associates to be wanting to fuck his wife. Yeah. He wanted Poppy on the side as his dirty secret, as his mistress, as someone who is just this sex object. And Poppy is a very sexual person and she likes things that are a little bit like degrading or a little bit seen as like not the norm. Mm -hmm. Poppy liked that in the bedroom, but she is a very like- She's very business-minded, goal-oriented. Like that's bedroom that, stuff. This is not everyday stuff. She, Sterling didn't realize that women can be both. Right. And his loss because, ugh. So anyway, in this confession, she's kind of getting into this graphic detail about the time that Sterling found her at the club. He had been looking for her because he wanted her to be his mistress. He hired a private investigator to find her because she has been gone from quote unquote normal lives for years. And he was have her back in a mistress. Bag. And so he found her at this club. He goes, he pulls her into a private room where they fuck they hate fuck. They hate fuck. And so this is kind of Poppy confession being like, what's wrong with me? Why do I like this type of thing? I know that he sucks also, but for some reason I'm drawn to him. What's wrong with me? And in this, Tyler has kind of grown fonder of Poppy and is very attracted to her physically. Mm -hmm. But this is kind of what brings on the first kind of sexual encounter between Poppy and Tyler in the church after her confession Woo, steamy. Oh my goodness, <laughs> the way these sex scenes are written, fantastic. The next kind of scene, um, Poppy has kind of taken church in. She's diving in. She loves helping people, and we learn that she's gone to Haiti to volunteer um, during her undergrad, stuff like that. So she is a very giving person. Mm -hmm. So something that the church does is a pancake breakfast. So she volunteers to help out at the pancake breakfast where her and Tyler avoid each other the entire time because said hookup was literally the night before this. So like, think about when you We're see a one night stand like on campus, like <laughs> when you're in college, dude, but oh. he's a priest. Yeah, awkwardness. So... And this has also led to a lot of guilt on both parties' parts. So this is like a very uncomfortable, they're both kind of avoiding each other. And Millie, who is one of the older parishioner. And Millie is so great. She's like an, in her late 80s. And she's just no nonsense. She's fantastic. She's a great comical relief too. Yes. And she's also taken on a grandmother role for Tyler. She's always bringing him casseroles to eat. And always there to talk. Like she's just a very warm soul. She is, but she's very direct and has no problem speaking her mind. Right. So after this awkward pancake breakfast, um, later that night, there's this big storm where um, Tyler hears some knocks on the door. So he goes and it is Poppy, obviously looking very good, but she's drenched because it's raining. So, And it's late at night. It's so like 2 a.m., it's a booty call. Like She's in some shorty shorts and a white Walking Dead t-shirt. Yes. That's and now wet. Yes. So. so this is another scene that leads into another smutty, sexy scene. This kind moment of, solidifies there's, there's something more happening between them. It's more than just sex. Yes. It's a lot of sex. But it's more than that. With Poppy having her MBA, wanting to be involved in the church, um, Tyler is in this process of wanting to raise money for a big church renovation. And Poppy, just being a very smart, savvy, business-like person, comes up with this great pitch to help the church raise money. And so it's her, Millie, and Tyler, they like, they're out at coffee where they're kind of discussing this like big plan. And this is where you really get to see that like Poppy is very smart. Like, she knows her shit. She should be leading a boardroom. Should and, be CEO of something. And that's, like, a thought that 
Tyler has kind of throughout the whole book. Like he makes these comments where he's like, she should be commanding a boardroom Mm -hmm. with just her fierceness and just that energy. So he's starting to see the business mind and behind the just the pretty face Mm -hmm. that there's more to her than surface level skin deep sexiness. So after this meeting, uh, Poppy has a conversation with Tyler about the progress of her faith and kind of how she's grappling and struggling with their dynamic and relationship. So Tyler suggests to her that she pray on it. And she's like, I'm having a hard time with the concept of prayer. So Tyler suggests that they have a meeting at the church after one of his meetings and he'll teach her how to pray. In Catholicism, there is a specific way that you pray if you use a rosary. So he was he's going to teach her about the rosary and then just give her other ideas of one-on-one prayer or even how you can kind of just sit in silence. Because uh, again, religion is a very big theme within this book. That prayer lesson turns into sexy time. Mm, 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 mm. Some other actions that are down on your knees. <laughs> and then some. And then some. And then Poppy has to um, return to work out of uh, out of town. She has to go out of town for a few days for work. At the club, she's no longer dancing at the club. She's running the finances for the club. She's balancing the books. She's more business end. And this is where we kind of get our first fight between Tyler and Poppy. They kind of have tiffs throughout the whole thing. Tyler is a very, like, possessive, jealous male lead. Yes. And it is a theme throughout both the novella and the normal book that he starts making things up in his head. He's a big self-sabotage person. Yes. He gets in his head, he overthinks, overanalyzes, and then acts on the things that he's convinced himself are happening. So this fight is not li- actual problems, self-created problems. Right. So this fight has a little to do with Sterling. He knows that they are still kind of they have a history. And this is also the first fight um cuz Poppy wants to actually talk more about their relationship and where is it going to go cuz you know, he's a priest, they're not supposed to be together, but they're falling for each other at this point. Yeah, and they're so the one thing about Poppy and Tyler that I noticed reading is that they they do communicate about some things, but then lack communication on like other aspects. They are pretty upfront with each other. Like they both know that they're falling for each other. Mm-hmm. But it's more so like after that. Like they're very open about like in the moment. In the moment. But when it comes to thinking about what the future holds that's kind of where tyler that's where tyler tenses. shuts down yeah he doesn't want to have that conversation because i mean this is a huge deal he's grappling with he's a priest he's not allowed to marry he's not allowed to fall in love but he he is falling in love with this woman and it's like does he leave what he's worked hard to achieve the reason why he's doing this is in memory to his sister and to kind of correct wrongs of the church that is something that definitely gets discussed and acknowledged is that there are systemic problems within the catholic church and Mm -hmm. it's something that tyler is very passionate about so it makes sense as to why like i get why he doesn't want to talk about it because he doesn't know these two concepts of the things that he really wants poppy in the church are conflicting things and he is right in the middle And I understand why he kind of doesn't talk about it because he's kind of like, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do either. And Poppy doesn't want to necessarily make him have to choose because she doesn't want there to be any resentment or guilt or feeling like he has to leave to be with her. Right. But at the same time, she's not going to put herself into basically another mistress situation with Tyler. And I think that she also struggles with wanting Tyler to leave the church for her. Part of the reason why she is starting to fall for Tyler is because... So then we have another scene where um, Poppy visits office hours, which leads to what? Another sex scene? 
<laughs> it another one? Say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. So as you can tell, plot leads up to sex. The whole point of the plot lines is so we can get those smutty scenes. And I'm not mad at it. <laughs> Bring them on. So Tyler um, then gifts Poppy with a really meaningful gift. Yes. Which is Lizzie's old rosary. Since Poppy is new to Faith, she doesn't have a rosary. So Tyler thinks that this is the perfect opportunity to gift her this for mul multiple reasons. One, because he is feeling a lot of strong feelings towards her. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that he thinks that he would find anyone else more deserving of his late sister's rosary. And also he feels that Lizzie would have really liked Poppy. I feel like the giving of this is a big shift in their relationship dynamic where it's like, this is real and they need to start making some choices at this point. And so Tyler kind of having these conflicting feelings, knowing he's getting in too deep, he decides to go see probably one of his closest friends who's also another priest, Priest Jordan. They went to seminary school. They went to together. seminary school. And Tyler is, I forget the word for it. Confessor. Confessor. Thank you. So Tyler and Jordan have a pretty close relationship, especially when it comes to the priesthood. So Tyler goes to visit Jordan to pretty much confess. How Jordan's kind of depicted is that he kind of has this like sixth sense. sense when it comes to otherworldly things. There's a little bit more mysticism with Jordan and his relationship with Faith. He's kind of more in tune to the other side of the veil, if you will. Yes. So he kind of gets these strong feelings that he feels like either God or whatever is talking to him. And and it's kind of weird because Jordan in this um, confrontation between uh, Tyler and Jordan basically refuses Tyler's yeah, confession. Yeah, Jordan pretty much is like automatically knows that it's about a girl. He's kind of like, who is she? And he's kind of like, are you done? Like, are you willing to stop? And Tyler's kind of like, no. And Jordan's like, exactly. Come back when you're actually ready to like confess and atone. And so Tyler's kind of like, the fuck? Because Tyler really wants to get this off his chest. Because he's feeling mad guilt. He's feeling mad guilt because, you know, during masses, during confessions, all of this is reminding him of the things that him and Poppy have been doing. And also he's trying to avoid scandal for the church because he entered the priesthood and took over this parish during scandal. Mm -hmm. And he's turned it around and he's gotten the community back into church and to trust him and trust faith again. And this relationship he's having with Poppy could completely break that. So after this failed attempt of the confession... Tyler comes back home and there's a interaction between him and Millie. Millie is calling him out and saying, honey, I know you're, you've been between the sheets with Poppy. And it's okay. And it's okay. But figure your shit out before it hits the fan. And I love this moment because she actually kind of approved. Yeah. She's like, you're at the end of the day, you're still a man. Yeah. She's like, you're a man. Like your, desire, like, your desires aren't going to go away just because you are a priest. After Millie has told Tyler that she knows about her, him and Poppy, we get another big confrontation from said ex-boyfriend Sterling. He shows up at the church because he wants to size up his competition. And yeah. this is exactly what he tells Tyler to his face. He says, I'm here to get Poppy back. I know about y'all. Because this private investigator that Sterling's hired to find Poppy initially found out about Poppy and Tyler's relationship. And this is also when he just slides over a manila folder and Tyler opens it and sees that there are some discriminating pictures of him and Poppy kissing. This is enough. Like, like, this the, is... The way in which he's holding her while they're kissing is very intense and... Damning. Not good for a priest. Very damning evidence. So now three people know. We have Jordan, we have Millie, and we have Sterling. 
Sterling's blackmailing Tyler, but he's also going to confront Poppy and kind of blackmail her as well. Like, you either agree to this mistress scenario or I'm going to release these photos. Yes, because Sterling being the grade A asshole that he is, right after leaving the church, he goes to Poppy's and makes all of this known that he also knows, obviously, about Tyler and Poppy. And so she kind of goes missing. But she's off with Sterling. Sterling. So Tyler, after this confrontation, ends up going over to Poppy's house. He uses a spare key, and she's nowhere to be found. And his first thought is, she's with Sterling. She's with Sterling. He gets that suspicion confirmed when Sterling texts him a picture of being with Poppy. So in this instance, he wasn't wrong. His wasn't wrong. His his internal feelings, his thoughts, they were spot on because... But Poppy only yes. left with Sterling to protect Tyler. Yes. But obviously, Tyler doesn't know this. And he's thinking the worst. Mm -hmm. He's thinking the worst. And so she's gone for like a 24-hour period of time when she's not responding to his texts or anything like that. He hasn't heard from her. And he's the next day, he's in his office, and she shows up in the same clothes that she was wearing the night before. They're rumpled, hair, makeup. You could tell that she had, like, slept in it. Mm -hmm. So she's looking like she's a doing, walk of shame. Yeah. Like, she looks like she's a walk of shame. But that doesn't stop Tyler because he still fucks her in his office midday. It's more of a jealousy thing because he thinks that Poppy was actually intimate with Sterling. And he wants to replace the memory of Sterling with himself, this very possessive. But Poppy winds up letting him know she didn't do anything no. with Sterling. She wants nothing to do with Sterling. She wants nothing to do with Sterling. She loves Tyler and only wants to be on t with Tyler and says that she will never cheat because cheating is not her thing. She was cheated on with by Sterling their whole relationship. That's not her vibe. And she went with him to kind of talk him off of the ledge of this blackmail plot, they do reconcile. And Poppy decides she wants to take Tyler on a date. Yes. And this date night is not a normal date night. Um, Poppy takes Tyler to the club. Where she works. The club. Priest in the strip club. And she gets a private room. She takes him to it, and she is like, chill here for a second. I'll be back, baby. She leaves him in this VIP room where he's just thinking about the fact that she fucks Sterling in a room very similar to so this. He's starting to get so he's already in his head being fucking dumb. <laughs> Jealousy re like resurfaces here. But then all of that kind of blinks out when Poppy re-enters the room and uh, is in, like, full strip garb. You got the heels, you got the lingerie, you got this blue-ass wig, you got the the heavy makeup. Like, she is here to play, she's here to seduce, and she does. Another sex scene. Yep. And <laughs> <laughs> Teaser for the sex breakdown of this book. Yeah. So after um, the date night and Tyler having the realizations that he ultimately wants Poppy over his vocation, over the church. He then goes over to Poppy's because he is like, I'm going to marry her. He's like, I'm in love. She's my future. This is what I want. So he goes over to Poppy's house and he lets himself in because that's very much like they're kind of that on that level of the relationship where he hears a male voice and he finds Poppy and Sterling in her bedroom. Sterling's coat is off, thrown over the bed, and they're kind of in an embrace. And Sterling leans in and kisses Poppy, and Poppy is responsive to this kiss. So Tyler flees. He is shocked, hurt, in disbelief, mm -hmm. he just gave up his whole life with the church for Poppy to find Poppy 
kissing Sterling, doing the thing that she said that she would never do. So he flees and he ends up just driving aimlessly and he finds himself at Jordan's. He forgets his phone. He doesn't really have anything on him. He's just in that shock phase. In this scene, Jordan is kind of talking him through what happened. And Tyler has now switched back and saying, no, me and Poppy are done. I want my career. I want the church. If I can't have Poppy, the only reason that he would leave the priesthood is for Poppy. And since he no longer has Poppy, there's no point in him no longer leaving. Being a priest. Right. So then we get a call. Um, Jordan's phone is ringing. And he answers it. And it is the bishop. So it is like their boss. Mm -hmm. And the bishop breaks the news that the pictures of Poppy and Tyler have been released. And so Tyler and the bishop, it seems like Tyler still wants to try to smooth it over and still be a priest. But ultimately, at the end of the conversation... It, it's either you leave or you get fired. Yes. And so he leaves. So Tyler returns home to try to find a new path. He had this idea of like being a missionary with Poppy and doing the Lord's work through good works and traveling the world. Um, he's contemplating going back to school. But mind you, in this time that this Poppy thing has kind of blown up, they have not spoken to each other. Nope. There has been no conversation. There's been no phone calls, no text messages. And Tyler ends up um, going to the house and she has disappeared. Her house is empty. She's packed her stuff. She's gone. She's gone. And so he knows that it is final, that he lost both Poppy and the priesthood and the church in one fell swoop. It's all gone. So he is now alone, back to the drawing board, trying to figure out what the next step is. He ends up taking a mission trip in Africa. And he's out there building schools, digging wells, mm -hmm. doing all doing that type of thing. But he's also in the process, before he left, he applied to a few PhD programs. Yeah. Thinking about going back to school, becoming a scholar. We get a kind of time jump. It's like an eight-month, ten-month, something like that time jump. Um, from the time that he leaves to go help um, in Africa to the time that he comes back. Because he's been accepted to PhD programs. Yep, he's going to be going to Princeton. So once he comes back, he kind of is on a quest. He has a he has direction for his life, but he wants closure with Pop. He's kind of, he has, he's come, he's come to terms with it. He's kind of had the closure. But he wants to have like one final conversation yes. with her. Um, so he, he wants to find her. So he starts at the club where she worked. He finds out that she's left, but she did leave... An envelope. An envelope for Tyler. And in this envelope, she's returning his sister's rosary. She's returned the rosary, um, which he takes pretty hard because that was a gift. He didn't want it back. He didn't want it returned. He still wants Poppy to have it as a reminder of her faith. Because yes. Poppy throughout all of this has very much dived in to being a Catholic. Yes. So when he returns and he's starting to get ready um, to start school in Princeton, he has decided that he's going to search for Poppy in New York. And return the rosary. And return the rosary. So he tries different avenues, but nothing really works. So for his final kind of last resort, he decides to go see Sterling. Because he assumes that the two of them are together. together. So he goes, sucking up his pride, and Sterling um, is there and meets with him. And we learn that Sterling and Poppy are not together. That she ended up kicking him out. He said as soon as he kissed her, she kicked him out and said that she is done. And that she wants nothing to do with him. Mm -hmm. She was never going to be his mistress. It was over. And... It was always it's over. Be Tyler and Sterling has thought this whole time that Poppy's been with, Ty with Tyler. Yes, because Sterling asks Tyler how Poppy is, and he goes, "Homie, I thought Poppy was with you." Yeah. He's like, "No, I thought she was with you." So he um, ends up 
learning that she opened a dance, studio. a dance studio. And so he tracks her down to said dance studio, but no one is there. Where he then just looks across the street and sees there's a church. So he's going to go and pray and wait until the dance school opens so then he can finally have this confrontation with Poppy. So Tyler walks in and he sees a dark-haired beauty praying in the pews. And who is it? None Poppy. other than Poppy! And so he walks right up. He goes, Hey, little lamb. Hey, little lamb. Happily ever after. The end. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you're not wrong. <laughs> Thankfully, we do get a one-year time jump in the epilogue. And it's Tyler and Poppy's wedding day. Happily ever after. And, of course, we get a nice little sex scene in the epilogue before the wedding. Nothing better than that. But, yeah. So, they end up kind of figuring shit out. Fill us in on the relationship yeah. and what they've been up to. But this novella was 13 chapters plus an epilogue. It was, like, 130 pages. And there was so much shit. Sierra did us dirty. But pretty much in this novella... This um, novella shook me. Yeah, we get a lot of... Um, kind of big plot things that kind of happen um this is three years in the future after they're married yeah, or so, since their wedding yeah so three years into their marriage it's tyler's last semester with he's his, writing his dissertation yes. school and everything has kind of taken a precedent in his life and his relationship with poppy hasn't necessarily taken a back burner but he can't be as active as he would like to be because of Right. This but and his... it's not like Poppy is sitting at home. No. She's very active in her nonprofit. It's kind of grown. Yeah, her dance studio nonprofit's taking off, and she's in the middle of, like, um, planning this big gala fundraiser event. So she's been busy, too. Yes. Um. So we do get some good smut kind of sprinkled throughout this novella. I'd say the first, what? fourth to third of the novella you get like a you get a sexy scene every chapter pretty much almost every chapter and then it comes to a screeching halt yeah so tyler is still still dealing with his jealousy issues poppy actually has like a partner who is a male who is attractive who tyler like feels jealousy towards but basically the jealousy he had with poppy and sterling's relationship is now being manifested in this business relationship that poppy has with anton anton um because she's spending a lot of time with him because they're working late they're planning this gala they have a good friendship in addition to their business partnership at the gala tyler is late because his professor who is his leader of his doctoral program or of his dissertation goes into labor so he's kind of stuck taking his his professor to the hospital so she can give birth to her baby which happens to be on the day of this big gala that poppy has been like i want you here i need you here this was like her one big ask like please do not miss be late for yes. this event so he's late he's like three hours late he walks in and of course poppy and anton anton are arm in arm hand in hand doing the schmoozing that you do for at these galas so Tyler gets mad. He kind of pulls Poppy away from Anton and he says some really, the one thing about Tyler that kind of irked me as it went on is that Tyler is this alpha male, alpha male. Use that. He's please. internally an alpha male, which I, I have some thoughts that we'll get into. But with this particular scene, Poppy isn't looking this for the sex. She isn't looking to be degraded. She isn't looking for that type of conversation. But Tyler can't have normal conversations without turning it kind of sexual. Mm -hmm. And it really, like... This was not the time or place for that no. to happen. And so Poppy ends up crying and she runs away. And Tyler ends up going after her only because he sees that Antoine is going after her. And he wants to beat her to it. He finds her in one of the studios. Mm -hmm. They end up having some rougher sex. It's some hate nasty fucks. It is some 
nasty. Yes. Poppy slaps him, is pushing him, is scratching his neck to the point where he's bleeding. This gets very, like, primal chasey. Yes. He's, like, throwing her down on the ground, pinning her arms, like, and then he notices Antoine in the doorway and this primal urge to show Antoine what is his overtakes him to the point that he is kind of degrading Poppy and not in the way that she probably would appreciate. After the sex, she admits that normally sex fixes their relationship where they're mad at each other, they fuck, and they're good. This is not one of them because she is hurt that she just doesn't think that Tyler is going to be there for her. She also then lets us know that she saw Antoine in the doorway. And this is where she tells him that he's gay. And that Antoine actually had a crush on Tyler. So there really was no need for this whole no. jealousy and all this crap. But, that he was bringing. yes, but Poppy has kind of hit, hit her wits end. And she tells Tyler, I don't want you to be home when I come home. She's like, I need a week, if not more. You need to get a hotel. And he respects that, and he gets a hotel. The next kind of big pot point is something that you hated and you wish was not part of the novella. I want it to throw things. Yes, and that is the death of Millie. She's 92 years old now. She's in a nursing home. And Sierra kills Millie. I can't with this. <laughs> she offs her. Um, yeah, this was, I kind of saw it coming, but I was hoping that it wasn't. Same. I didn't want it to happen. Tyler finds out that Millie has passed and he flies to Kansas City to go to her funeral and he tries to get in touch with Poppy. Up until this point, they haven't spoken to each other. He goes to Kansas City by himself and he's, you know, he's at the funeral at his old church that is bringing back a lot of memories, a lot of sadness, because he also thinks the new priest sucks, yeah. which I think is pretty funny that, that he, like, he <laughs> was... is like, this priest is garbage. I'm so much better. And then he gets up and delivers his eulogy. Which was a very nice eulogy. I thought it was really well written. And he looks up and he sees Poppy in the back. So Poppy did come because Poppy and Millie had a relationship as well. Poppy ends up coming. They end up getting a hotel room because Poppy's like, I want to spend the night with you. We have things to talk about. We have about. things to talk about. So they go to the hotel. Surprise! Poppy is pregnant. And that's another reason why she was so hurt during the events of the, of the gala. Because she was just thinking about how... It's looking like she's going to be a single parent. How he couldn't show up for this. How is he going to show up and be a father? So she was getting her own doubts. So she kind of held off on telling him. Earlier in the novella, she does send him this text message where it's like, come home tonight. I'm like, I want to tell you about my day. Because that is when she found out she was pregnant. And that's when she initially wanted to share but Tyler being busy with his dissertation didn't get home until late. And then Poppy just never really found that good time because she, want she wanted it to be special. She wanted it to be in the right setting. And she wanted to break the news to him in person, in person. versus a text message or yes. a phone call. Yes. So she finally tells him and he's ecstatic. He's super excited. They both want kids. So this is a really good thing. Then sequence. Trigger warning. Trigger warning. Miscarriages. Um, graphic kind of tellings of a miscarriage. And so... Very factual. Yeah. And so Poppy ends up losing the baby, and she takes this really hard. She gets depressed. She's kind of just skating through emotions. It's, you know, Tyler's trying to coax her out of bed, out of the house. Very understandably so of how one... She's feeling guilty because she thinks that she did something, that this was punishment. And it's not. And Tyler's been blaming himself as well and thinking it's his fault and his punishment for kind of everything that led up to this point. But as he's starting to see Poppy struggle and how she's verbalizing the same sort of thoughts that he's having internally, he realizes how ridiculous it sounds. And so he immediately 
shuts it down. Shuts it down for both of them, thankfully. Because mm -hmm. again, it's this is not something that's a punishment or that they deserve. Guilt is a common theme found between priest and midnight mass within religion. And yes. it's something that both of the characters struggle with. You get a lot of it more so from Tyler just because it's his point of view. But guilt, feeling that guilt is very prevalent. A big theme. Yes. And so they finally kind of squash this. I love the way in which Tyler did do this by just taking care of her. Um, he starts to kind of do all of um, Poppy's little things that she enjoyed doing. Like, she stopped reading. So he started reading to her. He was very supportive. Very supportive. Like, he was there for her throughout this period of time where she was struggling. And slowly she starts to kind of come back to herself. They start to reconnect through these acts of love, acts of service. Yes. They come back together. Yes. And so one day Poppy just seems that she's doing better and says, I want to go to mass. Midnight mass. Midnight mass. It's Christmas. It's Christmas Eve going into Christmas day. Mm -hmm. So they want to go to midnight mass where they kind of get more kind of closure. After the service is over, Poppy's just kind of looking at the nativity scene. This is a, a very big moment for the two of them reconciling as a couple and, and forgiving themselves and giving themselves, allowing themselves the grace of their grief for what they went through. Right. Yes. And so... This is kind of the closure that like Tyler need on needed out of this situation. And I think with his guilt in general, I think that he's kind of had that epiphany that he needs to be less harsh on himself when it comes to feeling that guilt, which I thought was a really great kind of ending to the novella because they did. There was so much that happened. In yeah. Such Condensed. <laughs> story like it for a novella is long but for everything that we was got in, in it yeah it was short yes and then we also get an epilogue which is a year later which is a poppy pov jordan's church mm -hmm. where he preaches and um jordan's given them the church for the night and so in her point of view this is her kind of giving this confession like retelling of the mischief that her and Tyler got up to, which was a role-playing, which kind of reflected... Which reenacts, like... Their, their first time together, yeah. where he's a priest, he's in his whole getup, and he's like, what brings you in? And she's this lost. And they just bang it out. And we end with a confession again. And we end with a bang! <laughs> and we also end with Poppy, then um, she gives Tyler... A gift. The gift is a positive pregnancy test. Leaves us. And then the author, Sierra Simone, did something that you really like. We get an acknowledgement after the epilogue dealing with the miscarriage and how this uh, new pregnancy announcement was open-ended. In the romance kind of genre, you always, you don't really see a lot of mention or talk about women who have like fertility problems. Mm -hmm. It seems like everyone always gets their happy, happily ever after. Everyone is always fertile. Yeah, everybody gets, like, the marriage. The, the kids. kids. Yeah. And as Ashton was saying, you know, a lot of these romance books don't cover fertility issues or even couples who just consciously don't want to. choose to not have kids. So this is kind of an open for an interpretation of where this positive test goes. Because um, Poppy kind of leads off with that hey let's just see where this takes us yeah which i really like and i can i definitely can get behind um how this novella kind of ended okay so that was kind of the breakdown of both priest and midnight mass let's talk about some of the things that we love slash hated so one thing that i really loved i enjoyed and kind of to go along with the dirtier writing, I loved all of the smutty scenes. Not just the fact that there were a lot of them, but they were also different. Mm -hmm. She does a, a really, yeah, she has a really good job at giving a variety of different kind of scenes, even though there is a lot of sex 
throughout this whole book, I didn't personally ever feel like I'm reading the same scene over and over and over again. They have similar themes, but each one brings something different, Yes, which I am all here for, especially if it's you're going to have a really smutty book, you got to give variety within that smut. And kind of piggybacking off of that, something I loved is how Sierra Simone writes religion in this and also how she writes religion within sex. Um, Because that's a big thing with Tyler is like he kind of understands his faith in a different way through sex. There's very traditional closed-minded views of sex within religion, especially within, within Catholicism. Yeah. So the way that Tyler has this newfound religious experience and sees God in a different way through his sexual experiences with Poppy, I really loved. Yeah. So I am Catholic, but not super religious. I'm not involved in the church by any means. Even though, yes, I am Catholic, I'm also very kind of Wiccan, witchy, pagan-y. <laughs> um, it's a big juxtaposition. <laughs> <laughs> You're just your own person, girl. You do you. But I, I appreciate and love how it was written and handled. I do too. And I um, am not Catholic. I was raised Presbyterian, but I was raised very non-religious. But as somebody who, one, isn't Catholic, and two, who isn't religious, I never felt lost with the concepts or the ideas that she was writing about. Like, I think that it was all very thorough. So even if you don't have a very like deep grasp of a religion, uh, being Catholic, Mm -hmm. I wasn't lost and I could still relate because I know enough to kind of understand like what Tyler was kind of going through. And I think that Sierra does a really good job in her writing at making sure that it's detailed enough that you're not being lost. So more lighthearted love. Yes. Millie. Mutual love. We both loved Millie. She was just a great character. She brought in, I think, some needed relief yes and we needed somebody outside of the church who was also going to be that kind of it's okay person she was definitely the voice of reason one thing that i will say that i hate i felt the last few chapters happen very fast in both the full-length novel and the novella i thought that um the reconcile the reconciliation in both happens so quickly that there's sierra does a great job of kind of building this up and kind of walking us through this and then it kind of just is like she's just like okay i just am done and i just want this to end (laughs) especially with like the heavy content density of what they're dealing with oh yeah like millie's death miscarriage do I stay in the priesthood or not? Like, right, very- Poppy just leaving and him leaving to go on his mission trip. Like, these are very life changing things, and the resolve on resolve on them is lackluster. Yes, and to kind of go a little bit hand in hand with that, something else that I didn't necessarily love either in romance books, it is kind of common to have situations where sex is used as a tool to progress emotional plot Mm -hmm. between the two main characters or the multiple main characters depending on what type of romance novel you're reading um (laughs) but i felt like in this book that's exactly what they do but i just also don't feel like they get enough emotional connection from the sex like it's i just don't get that yeah Especially, it really bothered me in the novella because at that point, they've been married for three years. The miscommunication and, like, the breakdown of communication should be resolved within the three years of you being married. So, I understand your point. In a three-year course of period of time, you should be able to kind of get over those types of, like, possessiveness, jealousy, stuff like that that Tyler kind of suffers with even within the novella yeah and i get jealousy will can still come into play in a relationship at any stage 
but I just feel like they should have been able to talk stuff out better. Well, yeah. At but that, that point where they were at in the novella. Well, Tyler just doesn't seem like he's very good with communicating using his, using his words. Going back to my earlier comment on the, hey, I just don't feel like we got enough of that emotional vulnerability and connection after those intense sex scenes, besides for them just like saying, I love you, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, gonna make everything uh, yeah, I'm just kind of like, and maybe that also goes into the point of like, if it was more of a duel, and if we got more of Poppy's internal kind of struggles and seeing her point of view, it might have really changed my opinion. That's something I wish we got was more of Poppy's point of view. Yeah. Like with the first book with Priest, like every five chapters, give me a chapter of Poppy. Yeah, it doesn't need to be a full like duel, but I really was just missing that Especially kind of connection. Priest only had 34 chapters. Yeah. So it wasn't like a super hefty book. I yeah. feel like we could have gotten like three or four full chapters of a poppy point of view within these like kind of pivotal moments and it would have yeah made it a bit better and i think that <sighs> we didn't get as we didn't get enough of her struggle or get to connect with her struggle as much because we didn't get her point of view exactly so her struggle seemed a little bit more superficial yeah i guess at this point uh, you can kind of figure i kind of just hated the novella yeah Hate is kind of strong, but in this whole love-hate letter thing, it's definitely the hate. <laughs> um, yeah, I just... There was too much heavy stuff for my taste. For a novella. I think it would have been wonderful as a second full book. Yeah. I disagree. So I actually kind of liked the novella. I, I agree with you that... There were a lot of big plot points that kind of fell flat because it is a novella and that it isn't a full book. It's only 140 pages. But I did kind of like seeing Poppy and Tyler out in the real world. We didn't really get to see them once he left the church in Priest. It kind of was just that year gap and they were at their wedding. But yeah. all that scene was is a sex scene. So... I liked that too and that's what I kind of wanted the full novella to be with a little bit of drama. Yes. But it was kind of like the reverse because they, they did go through a lot of drama. There were a lot of heavy things to read. But I did like that it kind of brought in some insight on kind of where they're at in their kind of journey of marriage and still kind of figuring out their shit so i definitely appreciated getting a little bit more insight another thing i hated which is with both books is sterling i felt like he could have been a much more evil character he's your douchebag rich guy and you could really kind of play up the the villain the villainy the villain characteristics that he has because it was great because he's married he's still after poppy as a mistress like that all yeah. right off the bat is kind of like shady dude like there were a lot of missed opportunity like, to make him a great character to hate and then towards the end of priest it's like he kind of I mean, he helps Tyler. He helps Tyler. Tyler kind of forgives him. But it's like, at the same time, this man's done nothing but call the woman you love. And then going into the novella, you're now wife, a whore. And the he was time. the one that released the pictures. Yeah. That's like unforgivable. Like, dude. And then, he, and like, so in the novella, so <laughs> one and thing I do I actually like about the novella is I kind of do like Tyler and Sterling's relationship three years down the road. I hated it. <laughs> kind of friends and it's low-key kind of funny because like even in the novella sterling kind of makes a comment being like yeah it was kind of a dick move like releasing those photos but like no shit <laughs> glad like that's in the past like whatever i don't know as much as i like hated sterling when i was reading priest because he's such a shitty guy character i kind of liked that tyler and him put everything kind of under the rug and like get along enough and it kind of seems like sterling was the one that kind of was like i fuck with you like 
You're we're friend. gonna we're gonna be friends because Tyler's even like I can't shake him. Like he's just <laughs> I don't like hate that. I enjoyed the comic relief in the novella with it, but I hated it. Like, I hated that then Sterling becomes Tyler's friend. And yeah, because I wanted him to be this awful villain that kind of continues. Because then, like, the whole him trying to make Poppy his mistress, and then at Thanksgiving dinner in the novella, Sterling's there with his wife, and it's kind of just cool. I definitely get it. But I low-key kind of like it, even though I kind of don't. It's I'm confused. I'm I have I have I have a lot of feelings. I'm glad you liked it. I yeah. wish I liked it. Yeah. But I didn't. <laughs> and then the last thing that you really hated. Fucking feminist Tyler. So this was kind of a theme throughout the book where he refers to himself as feminist ally <laughs> Tyler or feminist no, Tyler. Just no. And but he's so No. Uh, yeah, Alex hated this. Like, hated this. She's like, I'm over it. I'm over it. It added nothing to the plot. It added nothing to his character development for me because then his actions and his inner dialogue to me was not feminist ally. It irritated the fuck out of me and I wanted it out. Yes. But to not, like, rip Tyler a new one too much. Mutual love. How he loved to listen to Britney Spears. <laughs> right. So this was kind of a theme too that- To bring it back up to some We <laughs> Throughout the book, Tyler likes to run. That's his exercises of choice. And whenever he's running, he's always listening to Britney Spears, which we later find out is because that was Lizzie's favorite artist. So he kind of listens to Britney to kind of remember Lizzie and her memory and stuff, which I love too. I thought that that kind of tie-in was just a really sweet touch. So those were some of our love hates. I'm glad we ended on a love instead of me Yes, <laughs> I am too. Especially since I'm the one who suggested we do this book and I'm the one going off the rails. I know. I'm kind of like, it was fine. And Alex is like, hate this, hate that. Now's the time where we talk about smut, baby. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about Tyler Poppy. <laughs> Doing it in all the places. <laughs> In church, the church, baby. It's <laughs> about smut. There was so much we counted, and there are 13 smutty scenes in this entire book, which is a lot. Yes. That's excessive. Especially because, again, this is only a 34 chapter. Yeah, 340 page book ish around and, there. And the 13 scenes is just for priests. That's. Not including the smut scenes you get in Midnight Mass. No, I did not tally up those. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the first full-on smutty scene. Because there was, and like we talked about throughout this episode, Sierra throws in so much shit into these scenes, into these smutty chapters. They're very detailed. They're very detailed, and there's normally like a lot kind of going on. So we kind of want to like go into detail just because we both rated the smut pretty high. pretty high. Like this is a very smutty book. It's done really well. Like the way it's written, even though like you're, because you're getting the sex scenes from the male perspective are a little bit more vulgar and dirty. There's also still this like kind of beautiful magical element to some of them yes and for me personally i was not a fan of the whole male pov but i have to say i am a fan of when i'm reading a dual pov i like the male perspective in smutty scenes mm -hmm. because i'm a female so i i know what the girl is going to be thinking majority of the time yeah but i like kind of getting inside the like male brain during these scenes so even though i didn't love that it was all Tyler all the time in these scenes I was not upset about I was it. not disappointed yeah so to kind of like start off this first kind of smutty scene it's after Poppy's confessional where she gets into graphic detail about the last time that she saw Sterling and they hooked up in the strip club oh this is a good one and this is where Tyler um gets heated like he gets hot and bothered in the confessional and jealous and possessive yes so poppy is like in this confessional where she's getting very graphic and she kind of stops because she feels like she's oversharing she's kind of uncomfortable and this is where tyler kind of 
He's um, like, no, keep going. Tell me more. Yes. And she kind of is about to leave. Once Poppy kind of is getting a little hesitant and continuing, Tyler puts a stop to that and kind of cages her in almost the confessional mm -hmm. where he decides that he wants Poppy. So he goes down on her. He does. And this scene is very... In the middle of the church. Yes. This scene is like, there's a lot going on because even before the like sex stuff happens, it's just that like pent up tension because like he shoves her skirt up mm -hmm. above her waist. Because he's also been thinking about her before this encounter actually happens. Right. And then Poppy isn't wearing underwear because she thought it was would get in the way because we find out she was fingering herself while giving her confession. Yes. Um, and there's some like light spanking, which Poppy enjoys. And this is kind of where Tyler, his little pet name for her, which is Little Lamb. He starts, he calls her Little Lamb, which I personally like. Like, I kind of think that's cute. And then like- It was cute, slightly cringy. At times, but I like pet names. I know you're not a huge fan of pet names, but I am. So I wasn't mad. And then Tyler proceeds to go down on Poppy with her. Press this is the first time she's ever had that happen to her. Yes. So um, Tyler goes down on Poppy, pressed up against the baby grand piano where anyone could see her. And he's also eat, like going down on her from behind. Yes. And they're in the middle of the church. So they're at this point in the open. Anybody could walk in. Anyone could walk in. And then this is where she confesses that no one has ever made her finish that using way. their mouth before. And Tyler likes that because he's super possessive. So he's like, I got a first. Because mm -hmm. he wants to kind of like take any claim that Sterling had on her out and put his claim in exactly. instead. Yes. And then Tyler starts to kind of pull away because he's like, oh, sh he's starting to be like, oh, shit. Catholic guilt starts to sink in. Yes. But Poppy's having none of that. And she pretty much says, we won't have sex. So we, we won't have sex. So we aren't really breaking any rules. This I laughed at because I feel like this is the classic crutch mm -hmm. of a lot of people who are participating in religion right and saving themselves for marriage or celibacy whatever it is so you can do everything but penetration right so this is essentially what happens tyler pretty much tells poppy to lay down and show him what it looks like when she pleasures herself so she lays like on the ground just mm -hmm. in the front of the church and she starts touching herself because poppy admits that she's done that thinking of Tyler before this point. And he wants to see it. And he wants to see it. And she does. So then like Tyler kind of puts her hands above her head to hold her down, mm -hmm. which love over him without the penetration. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's a good scene, but it's also just kind of comical. It's kind of, it's just kind of funny. <laughs> yes. And then to kind of finish off the scene, um, Tyler ends up coming all over his, like, stomach, and Poppy literally takes her fingers, drags it through it, and, like, eats it, licks it off of her fingers. I feel like eating it is kind of more, <laughs> more what she actually did. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. I know it's kind of hot for some people, but it's just, I have mixed feelings on that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm I have mixed feelings, too. So as you can see, Sierra has a lot of elements in her sex scenes. There's mm -hmm. a lot of lot of shit going on. Mm -hmm. So that, and you know, I'm not mad that our first like smutty scene, they actually didn't fully have sex. Me either. Because we get tons of that. Well, later. I just think that if he if he did, it would have been like, I don't know. I he definitely needed that struggle. Even though their romance and their sexual appetite and relationship does happen at an escalated pace. If they just went straight into full on, I would be like, sex, okay, questionable. It, yeah, I would have it would have lost me. I think it would have taken me out of the story. And so, even though the scene has struggle and her struggle, yeah, and even though the scene happens pretty early, like this is not a slow burn. Um, you get these types of scenes pretty right off the bat. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, in chapter two, he's already fantasizing about her sucking his dick. Right. Exactly. So I'm just happy that Sierra, that's kind of how she played it. Because I thought it was well done in the grand scheme of it. Mm -hmm. During the storm. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of another one of those, we're going to make and bend the rules to fit what constitutes sex within religious standards. Right. And thankfully, this is the last time we get one of those moments. Yeah. But this one was This just, one kind of cracked me up a little bit. You get a really good steamy buildup. And yeah, because she comes over like this booty call. She's mm -hmm. wearing no bra, no panties. She's wet because it's raining. Mm -hmm. They have really good banter in this scene. There's really good dialogue of like, like you were saying, kind of leading into it. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's starting to get hot and heavy, heavy petting stuff. And that's where I started to yeah. kind of. It literally, it, like how she describes it, it's literally like an inch where it's just the, the very tip of the head. And again, it's just, it's so funny. That was just so funny to me. Like, I get this actually happens for people who are first breaking into their kind of sexual experiences. And it just, it takes you back to that awkward place. And I I connected with it, but it was so funny to reread. Yes. Yeah, that part of the scene definitely kind of had me like low-key laughing a little bit. But the rest of the scene is like it's re it's a really hot scene. Yeah, it's definitely a hot, a very good hot and heavy scene. It was just that one part I was just like you know chuckling to myself like oh yes because this is also the scene where we find out that Poppy likes to be degraded mm -hmm. um, during sex. Like she likes being called a slut. She likes being kind of demanded. She likes being like that submissive, dominate. Like she likes being dominated type of and degraded type of vibe yes um and tyler is definitely into that um we they kind start of start playing more into that sort of dynamic mm -hmm. because it seems like before tyler became a priest he was kind of a playboy it kind of seemed like he got around like when he was in college before he decided that this was kind of the path that he was taking and he was into some darker rougher he hints style at it, right of sex he before he became a priest right so poppy is kind of hitting all of his kind of boxes in what he likes mm -hmm. or what he used to like so when he was younger it seemed like he was kind of afraid to talk about those darker desires and wants with partners mm -hmm. and it's like oh like she actually likes it she's bringing it up she's initiating this yes and i think that like that's something that draws Tyler to her more mm -hmm. because he even does make a comment some point in the book where he's like, I've just decided that I should just date like the typical nice girl and not bring out this side of me because it's just easier yep. to not to bring it. it. Exactly. But Poppy doesn't have to do that. And this is kind of where I think he's realizing that like, this is where he first starts to. Yeah. And throughout this book and the novella, Poppy has to kind of drag that out of Tyler. Because then he tries to kind of be a good guy and be like, no, I can't be mean to the woman I love. And she's like, no, give it to me. I want it. I need it. I crave it. Yes. Some other cool scenes that kind of Sierra throws in are, um, there's this one scene where they call each other just in the day, in mm -hmm. the daytime. It's just a phone conversation that turns into a sexy time, dirty talk, sex, phone sex scene. They miss each other. They miss each other. Kiss you through the phone. Yeah, kiss me through the phone. But yeah, so they both get off. They get each, get each other off over the phone and Poppy sends Tyler dirty pics during. And then Tyler ends up taking a video of him like finishing and sends it. one of Poppy's it. favorite things is to watch Tyler finish. Yes. But, like, I thought that was a really good scene. I was like, I'm here for that. And then they make plans to, like, finish what they started later. Right. Which they do. <laughs> Something I I do like, it's kind of a theme throughout the book and the novella, is I feel like Tyler uses orgasms, like, by fingering as punishment. I'll take that punishment. I know. I'm here for that. Punish me that way. Please. I also, I also feel like he sometimes uses anal as a punishment, but Poppy is like, 
she's here for it. Okay. I don't want that to be my punishment, but I'll take the right. I'll take the first one. Right. Like the thing is, though, with Poppy, you can't punish her using sex because it's enjoyable. That's exactly what she wants. Like she wants that rougher vibe. So if you're gonna punish her with that, you're not really punishing her, Tyler. Okay, so after um, the foam sex scene, they make plans, like Alex said, to meet up later that night. So Poppy ends up showing up at the church after one of Tyler's sessions, group sessions or whatever. Um, and it kind of starts off just with a bang. Um, he instantly kind of grabs her. He locks the door, picks her up, slams her against the door, and is like mm -hmm. making out with her. It's just, you know, hot and heavy, very passionate. Right off. Right, right off the gate right off the gate. So then he takes her up to the altar. He bends her over it, tying her hands with tincture. With his tincture. So that's like the, um, those are the ropes that the priests wear. So taking something holy, and I mean, you're in a church, she's pressed against the altar as like a sacrifice. It's his communion. And tying her hands with more holy items. There's some light spanking um, because Tyler doesn't like that Poppy keeps showing up commando because she's been commando all day. And he's like, um, if your skirt blue Someone's and she, see what's mine. and this is, this is what I love about Poppy because I, in this scene when he is like, what would you do if you, if you bent over wrong or whatever? And she goes, well, I used to strip for a living. So I think I'll be fine. And Tyler, <laughs> no shame. Tyler hates this answer. I love this answer. I did too. I thought it was so badass. I was Put him in his place. I was so here for it. Like, that's kind of the dialogue that you get, the banter that you get between these two, which I, I love. And then Poppy ends up going down on Tyler, and Tyler finally, he can't take it anymore. He finally fully has sex with her on the altar. And more the, than just the tip. More than just Full the tip. Tip. Fully. Seated. Fully seated. He was completely broke his vows. And how Sierra ends this chapter, because this chapter ends after this sex scene with Poppy's Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amen to the orgasm. I feel like with Poppy and Tyler, it's kind of like once they start really having full on sex, it just keeps going. And I think that they also, like, start to fall in love with each other pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that it's, like, the first time, it's kind of like, oh, damn. Feeling more than just a sexual attraction. Oh, yeah. Their um, emotional connection definitely stems from this, these sexual encounters, I feel like. Yes. And I also feel like it does because Tyler is taking her in places that mean so much to him. Mm -hmm. And the things that he's doing... Is so intense. It's so intense. And so this is where it starts to get taboo because a lot of the places where they are having sex, it's like in a blasphemous way. Yes. But it's so fun. Yeah, so fun. Okay, I gotta talk about this one. <laughs> Let's hear it. What the hell? What happens in this scene? <laughs> so this was a scene that I warned you about. You did. Going into the book. You did. And... When I read it the first time, it did not disappoint. This is the first time that Tyler and Poppy do anal. Because he's been thinking about it for a while. And he, like, every time, you know, they go at it, he kind of keeps looking at her butt and looking at her butthole. And he's like, I want to take it. I'm mm -hmm. going to take that ass. Yes. And this is where he does. And this scene is kind of set up by another Poppy confessional. Mm -hmm. So we're back in the confession, confessional setting. And... Poppy is talking about how she feels guilty about sleeping with Tyler and all the things that could go wrong because she knows that this is crossing so many lines. lines. But Tyler, being Tyler, they both start masturbating in the confessional again to Poppy's confession. Because um, she tells him how she got off thinking about him the other night. Mm -hmm. So one thing leads to another. He orders her to go to his office and this is where... The anal scene he, is going to commence. Yes. But, you know, he's in his office. He didn't come prepared. This is a spur of the moment decision. They don't have any lube. So he decides to go and get anointing oil. Yes. And use that as lube. That is one 
Oh, yes. Yep. And then we also learned that Poppy has done this before, but not with someone of Tyler's size. So she's a little, she's a little nervous. <laughs> so thankfully he brought out that holy oil. And you can just imagine, I mean, these scenes are very graphic. So we're not going to really go into detail. You can assume. Read them yourself. What's going on when they're doing anal. <laughs> And then, and this scene also brings in, after Tyler kind of is like rougher, he takes care of her. He cleans her up. He praises her. He comforts her. There's a lot of aftercare. And, and this is something- Anytime like, they have sex, there is aftercare. Um, he always try, he, he always asks for her consent before doing anything, especially when it starts to kind of get out of the norms of vanilla missionary kind of sex. He always, he wants that reassurance of her consent and, and it's, aftercare. And I very much appreciate that. And it's very clear that Poppy has like, no one's really ever done that for her. So people have kind of, you know, she's done things, she's experienced, but no one's really taken care of her and made sure that like checked in with her after. No one's gone about it the right way. Right. And so this, I do like seeing this side of their like relationship. And I get for readers, it can kind of be a bit much, you know, the confirmation, the reaffirming of the consent and the aftercare, the cool down period afterwards, but it's so important, mm -hmm. especially when you do start to enter into more of a BDSM sort of sexual encounter. So I, I really appreciated how Sierra Simone wrote that in. Right, and incorporates that. So like, this is like a very, fun hot scene mm -hmm. that's a little bit different because it's getting out of like the church vibe again sierra simone is she's switching it up with how she's yeah. writing these scenes and i love the variety yeah and it's a spicy scene i'm not mad at it so this is one of my favorites i think so too i think so too because i liked the I like playfulness the between them and they were in a different setting where there was less like oh we're gonna get caught yeah, and it kind of it takes the pressure off of their situation mm -hmm. because they are out of their small town. They're in the bigger city. They're in this private exclusive club. No one's really going to know who they are. Right. And then our final sex scene of the book. Obviously, these are not all the sex scenes. We're not going to give every sex scene away. No, we don't want to completely <laughs> spoil everything for you guys. But this is in the epilogue. And it's the day of their wedding. And it's a, it's a time jump, right? It's like a year later? Yep, it's a year later after um, Tyler and Poppy reconnected in New York. And you know what? They're going to bang it out in the coat closet right before they say I do. Yep, Tyler. It's funny because Poppy's even like, isn't it bad luck? And he's just like, Meh. it's fine. We've done worse. <laughs> We've done worse. We've already like, if, yeah. And so this is a fun scene because like Poppy is obviously all done up. This is New England's elite getting married. So she's like in this super expensive, very like princessy with all of the the dress, the yeah, layers and ruffles kind of dress. And makeup is probably up. like taking her hours to do. Hair is all done, and it's funny because after they consummate their <laughs> marriage, before the marriage, <laughs> getting a jump start. Tyler, before he walks out, he's kind of like, you may want to look in the mirror and uh, fix your lipstick, <laughs> touch up your makeup. And I'm just like, I'm like, you're such a douche. Like, if my fiance said that, I'd be like, you're such an asshole. <laughs> it's like, yes, I know. I have to look in the freaking mirror. <laughs> oh, but but top tier smut writing. But like, if you are looking for a book that you really just want some hot smut scenes, 10 out of 10 recommend. I mean, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Sierra does a great job at incorporating different elements it's not all the same. Yeah, as long as sex in a church isn't going to bother you, go for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things we do, Alex. I'm so happy we incorporated this into the podcast. Same. Because I'm a very visual person. So, like, I'm a big fan of going to Pinterest and, like, looking for boards that, like, give me inspiration. <laughs> I am. I'm a freak. I love when you share them with me. So let's start with our casting. So for this book, we really only chose to cast the two main characters, which are going to be Poppy and Tyler. Yep. So Alex, I have been dying to know who you casted for Poppy. For Poppy? Yes. All right. I 
I have two for Poppy. Ooh, okay. Is um, Elizabeth Gillies. <gasps> okay. From Victorious and Dynasty. Love it. I just feel like she radiates the, um, like, bad bitch CEO executive. And then also, like, the sex appeal of Yes. Poppy. And... How she kind of holds herself. I yeah. can see that. And also, Ooh. you know, the, I, I feel like she could do the whole, like, upper crust Definitely. Thing. I do see more of, like, the commanding the boardroom and the and the main stage a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. And then my second pick is more diving into that, like, New England, um, the New England old money family kind of side of Poppy. And that's... Alexandra Daddario. Okay. Yep. That's a good one, too. Can play this role. And I could see her being someone who, like, she definitely has, like, sex appeal. Mm -hmm. But she also kind of has, like, that, like, innocent, like, vibe. I don't really know if Poppy has that vibe. But, like, I don't, I don't know. I feel like she could, though. That could be another layer to her i i like that choice it's a different choice but in all the best ways yeah it also kind of diversifies the cast a little bit and that yeah i've been trying to because a lot of romance novels are very they're white they're very white heavy white um so i was i'm trying not to always just pick white actors and actresses I to play that. roles that, you know, are considered, like, depicted as being white. Um, Which is something I am interested in. I don't want to read it right away because I do need a break from this world with book two following Sean, Tyler's brother, where the love interest, she's black. And I, so it would be an interracial couple. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely here for that. And it's also supposed to be like age gappy. And the religious piece is on the female character. She's a postulant. So that means she's in training to become a nun. Mm, okay. Which gives me Sound of Music vibes. Yeah. I love that movie. Yeah. Yeah, no. I just. Something about Selena stood out to me. So I was like, I'm going to go with her. I'm here for that choice. My number one choice is an actress by the name of Odea Rush. She's actually um, from, she's yeah, she's from um, Israel. Um, but she gives, like, the aesthetic, the, the facial features, the hair, like, everything that, like, she's got going. And the lips. With Tyler being so obsessed yes. with Poppy's lips. She has beautiful lips. She, and she just, I, I don't know what it was. I saw her picture and I was like, who this bitch? <laughs> because she's Poppy. <laughs> I, I remember you showing me a picture of her and I was like, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, it. she, I just. You win the Poppy choice, with the Poppy casting with that choice. Okay, so now our leading man. Tell me who you casted for your Tyler Bell, Father Tyler. Mm, 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 mm. Even though he's not my favorite male lead in romance <laughs> books, I did enjoy his character. Okay, so I have two choices uh -huh. for Father Tyler. Uh huh. My first one, who's my number two, is Jamie Dornan. Irish. Yeah, is Tyler is Irish-American. Yeah. Uh, Jamie. I could see him as a priest. He's a, and you know what I mean? And with the hot priest memes uh -huh. that you mentioned a little bit in the book. Like, just picture Fifty Shades. In Put a priest, on yeah. He's and he's already he already knows he already knows how to do sexy scenes for yeah. the movies. Exactly, he'd be a natural. A little old, a little older. A little why. older. Tyler's twenty nine, but it's yeah. hard. But Hollywood can make people look young, so it doesn't really. And matter. I would rather, if anything got adapted to like TV or film, I'd rather them age characters up than down. Than down. Same. Same. Good choice. Like it. My number one choice, uh -huh. which is kind of a left field choice, Ooh. is not an actor. Who is it? It's actually a WWE superstar. 
<laughs> okay, which one? The Rock? No, no. <laughs> well, he's actually an actor too. So never mind. Um, it's Finn Balor. Okay. So he's Irish, and the reason why I picked Finn is his wrestling persona. He has like two different sides to him. So there's the Prince Finn Balor, who's like. Sorry to get wrestling knowledge out here, but he's the baby face. He's, like, the hero, the one you root for, the nice mm. guy. But then he has this alter ego, which is the demon. Oh. So I feel like he can do that switch that Tyler likes to do where he becomes, like, the dom. Right. Versus fem tie. fem tie versus dom tie. Both of them kind Maybe of lame. I would like it better if it was Finn Balor doing it. <laughs> Fair. I like those choices. And he just gives me that, yes. like, he's hot, but very, like, also kind of normal looking. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like that's kind of like the priest Tyler. Like, what I picture Tyler being is I picture him being hot. Like, I definitely do. But I don't picture him being, like, a rugged hot. Like, I picture him more as, like, a – like a – Boy next door. Yeah. The person who I was going to be like full on, in and out, done. And I don't know. This might be an unpopular opinion. Give it to me. Robert Pattinson. Huh. Huh. So. Our pets. You know what? If he can be Batman. (laughs) If he can be a vampire. If he can be Batman. He can be a priest who does the dirty. I just, and I feel like Rob Pattinson and Odea would look really good together on screen. Like, I just get really good. I don't know. I would want them two together, and then out of your choices, then, like, your other two choices, I'd want Theo and Selena. Yeah. I feel like they would look really good together. Honestly, all of those, all four of our choices were pretty, pretty good. I like all of them. All but right. now on to my other favorite part of the podcast. Time for the music. Song choice. We chose one song that we thought summed up the entire book in general, and then one Britney song, just because it was... It's such a reoccurring theme. You, we gotta choose a Britney song. Yes. Hit me with hit me with your song choice. Do you want song choice overall or Britney? Um, let's go Britney first. It's Britney, it's bitch. Britney, bitch. And that's funny because my song choice was Give Me More, which I'm pretty sure the entry to that song is It's Britney, bitch. Yeah. And it's like, Give me, give me more. Give me more. <laughs> give me and more just, of the smut. So, like, I, for this Britney song, I can just picture this being played in the strip club. But what about you? What was your Britney song? My Britney song. Not only, I feel like, represents the relationship between Poppy and Tyler, but it also represents my relation with this book. (laughs) Oh, God. Books. (laughs) Toxic. (laughs) Yup. They did have a little bit of a toxic uh, vibe going on. Hey, I think both of those Britney songs are perfect for this book and a good representation. And so for my song choice overall, I went with a Chase Atlantic song called Church. Great choice. (laughs) It's just a very dirty song. A lot of sexual innuendos, a lot of sexual undertones, and obviously it has to do with, like, they use religious um, sayings and, you know, I just... Yeah, that was like the first song that came to my mind. So I was like, I'm going with it. That's a good one. What about you? So mine is Temporary Bliss by The Cab. Ooh, so good. So you, I feel like, think I, deeper. Yeah, I You just- think deeper, girl. <laughs> I'm like surface. Like there's not much that goes on below, you know? Like I I'm not. I sometimes put too much thought into things like with no with the song choices no. with no such thing drinks no 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 <laughs> let me find the most obscure <laughs> reference <laughs> no 
I that's something that I appreciate. But like you were like <laughs> analyzing lyrics. You're like digging. I did. And I love that. I want to be more I, like you. I probably listened to like an hour and a half worth of music and then this song came on and I was like this is it. <laughs> no more I, no <laughs> search. I don't need to look anymore. <laughs> It's a good balance. It is a good balance. We're both chaotic in very different ways. And it I know. <laughs> we are. That's why we vibe so well. Pisces, Scorpio energy. Water signs. Yeah. But yeah, so those were our choices in song. So Alex, let's, yeah, let's get down to ratings. So here at Emotions and Potions, we do two types of ratings. We do a spice rating out of five, mm -hmm. and we do an overall rating out of ten. So, what were your final ratings overall on the books? Book, books. All right. So, for my overall ratings and spice ratings, I did Priest and then Midnight Mass. So, my Priest overall rating, I give it a 7.5 out of 10. I really did like this book. And I wasn't close behind. I gave it a 7. Um... Which I kind of surprising because you normally rate stuff higher. Than I you. know I do. I just the ending of the books just kind of took me out of it. I just didn't really feel fulfilled in a way that an ending of a book really should make me feel. So I think that that was really where I got a lot of the points, like kind of docked, and it just being a male POV. I this is the first time that I've read something where it is strictly. And the first time that it's written is male yeah. and only male. It's the, This is the first one I've read like this. And I have to say, I'm not a huge fan. Maybe it's just because of Tyler. I don't, I don't know. But overall, I mean, I would recommend it to people. If you're just looking for an easy, fast, really smutty kind of ri like ridiculous, because like the sex scenes in this is ridic. They're all ridiculous. Dick, dick, dick. Dick, 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 dick. dick, 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 dick. In dick mouth, <laughs> in butt, in normal holes. You, everywhere. Dick anywhere, everywhere, everywhere. It doesn't matter. It's going somewhere. All dick, all the time. But as far as overall, it was fine. What would you give the spice rating for Priest? I gave the spice a four or five. Four out of five. I thought that this was a very smutty book. It was. How she wrote it, how often there were sex scenes, the mm -hmm. detail of the sex scenes, the things that they were doing, definitely a little taboo. Definitely, like, questionable, like... Definitely sacrilegious. Sacrilegious, blasphemous, like, it definitely spicy. I gave the spice a 3.75 out of 5. Mm -hmm. I know we're kind of splitting hairs with me not just rounding up to a 4. Yeah, very Alex of you. <laughs> <laughs> and my reasoning for the 3.75 is I def this definitely wasn't flowery language when it comes to... They dropped the C language. word? C words being out there? See, I don't find that as offensive. But I gave it a 3.75 because the way the sex scenes are written are definitely a lot more vulgar-ish. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the actual acts of sex aren't crazy. Like, they're not out of the box. Like, no. there's no... I mean, I guess the only thing that people might is, like, anal. There's a lot of anal there in this There's a book. lot of anal, but, I mean, that's also normal. Like true i don't know it didn't introduce me to new kinks it didn't no no but i think that maybe for non-avid romance it would be a lot it but would. we that's all we read is like our heads are so full of smut it's ridiculous like we need a new hobbies we need to try new genres but like i no <laughs> but <laughs> maybe we'll sprinkle just them in there. just kidding i'm i take that back <laughs> All right, so the novella Midnight Mass. Yeah. What's I'm I'm gonna start off. I want you to give me your overall rating first because I feel like you're gonna be kinder. Yeah. So I gave it a seven as well. I kind of stuck with what I gave Priest. Like I said earlier, I wasn't super mad with the novella. I definitely had issues that you stated with like big plot points not really 
needed for like a novella. Like if you're going to do that, just make a freaking second book. But I did like to kind of get more because I feel like if there wasn't a novella, I would have ranked Priest lower. What about you? What was your what was your rating? I gave it a six out of ten. I'm surprised it wasn't lower. So I really thought you were gonna rate it like a four. Cause you were I was you mad. were not mad. I mean you were not happy with this. I was mad at the novella. But I really like Sierra Simone's writing. Right. So the things that I took issue with were I feel like more personal taste than actual like content. Or, like, actual writing or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So that I makes didn't sense. So, I like, complete... And it's... I don't think it's a bash-worthy... No. No. I, I definitely wouldn't bash the book. Right. I think it did give you more of Poppy and Tyler. I think I just came to the conclusion they're not my favorite romance couple. Yeah. What about your spice? I gave this a 3.25. Okay, I gave it a 3.5. So we weren't that far off. We definitely got a lot of smutty scenes from the novella. Yeah, which is why I didn't want to drop it too much lower than the first mm -hmm. book. But, I mean, we, at this point, we were kind of used to what kind of sex we're going to get from Poppy and Tyler. So there wasn't... The only other new thing was kind of the hate fuck. Yes, scene. I was about to say, the only kind of new vibe we got was in that room at the gala. That was definitely something that was very different from anything we read, but I agree. Most things were pretty on brand with what was already established. Mm -hmm. But so overall, is this a love or is this a hate letter? All right, so <laughs> I'm going to be splitting hairs on the sign-off for this. I would give Priest a love letter. The two books together and Midnight Mass on its own, a hate letter. Okay. You, that novella just really, you were not a fan. It was still enjoyable. And you're glad you read it. I'm glad I read it. It didn't tickle my pickle at the end. <laughs> tickle your pickle. <laughs> yeah. I am not surprised based on the conversation that we've been having. I kind of expected a hate letter from you. So can't really say that I'm all that shocked. Because I can't give it a like letter. This yeah, is a love this I know. Is a love That's what letter. makes it hard. Because I would... Because I don't, I don't hate either book. Right. But with the format of our podcast, it's... Love or hate. Love or hate. So I love Priest. I'm going to hate on the two together and the novella by itself. You know what? I'm going to go full on hate. For both? Yeah. Only because... I did not like that it was an all male people. <laughs> I can't get over it. I can't. It, like I got to like chapter fifteen, and I was like, "I'm over this motherfucker." I need some new internal thoughts because he was very much just the same kind of like thoughts. And I mean, I would recommend the book. It's not a bad book. I like the emotions that it's getting out of us and the conversation. Yeah, that it's but I just was annoyed with Tyler by the end, and I didn't want to be, but I was. He's not going on our book boyfriend list. Yeah, no, so hate, hate, hate letter, sorry. All right, so even though this was a hate letter to Priest, to Priest and Midnight Mass, this is not by any means a hate letter to Sierra Simone. No, I think that we're pretty willing and wanting to read another book of hers to kind of see if it's more so just Priest that we didn't necessarily love out of like her books and stuff. I'm definitely interested in reading her new Pamela series because I did love uh, Sierra's writing style. Right. These weren't bad books. They just no. weren't our cup of tea. Exactly. So thank you all for listening to this episode of Emotions and Potions. Yeah, thank you. We hope that you enjoyed. Um, follow us on Instagram, Emotions and Potions, and make sure you tune in every Thursday for a new episode. Let us know what you thought of this book and novella. Yeah, we're interested in your um, personal opinions as well. Well, until the next one, sayonara.